Hello, everybody. Um, this is going to be the last part for Volume 1 for that time I got reincarnated as a slime. And it's got to side story. The one I was talking about in the last video where he goes to Dwargon for the first time by himself. And this is when he was a little goblin. God has got to have some kind of lucky skill somewhere. If only Great Sage could get into his head and figure out his skills. Or, no, he's... Rimuru needs to do appraisal on this guy because he's got to have some kind of lucky skill because the amount of lucky things that happen to him, despite, you know, the danger, obviously, is still astounding. Not only did, well, this is when uh, the goblins were still goblins and um, they had a bunch of stuff to trade that they couldn't, that the even the cobalt merchants didn't want. So they were saying, oh, take it to the Dwarven Kingdom, you might be able to get some stuff there. And they send Gopta there to do it. And, uh, yeah, he has to fashion out a kind of makeshift wagon because carrying a mountain of stuff on your back is probably not going to get you. It's probably going to take at least a couple, at least six months to get there with that in that way. So he fashioned a little makeshift wagon to carry the stuff. And for the most part, it took like a week before he ran out of food. And... He decided, you know, he wants to eat a poisonous mushroom. The funny thing is, nothing happens because the only re way it's poison, or it's po a poisonous, essentially, if it's exposed to heat. So if you were to cook it, then it would be poisons, or poisonous. But the way he got to ate it, he ate it raw. So he wasn't even affected by it. He didn't even know it was poisonous. <laughs> and he actually ends up finding some other mushrooms, and he thought he found a safe mushroom... Out of all the poisonous ones that he thought he found, and he kept it in his pocket because he figured, oh, I'll eat it that later. He got to the river, and he kind of didn't realize which way to go because they told him once he got to the river to go uh, to the left, essentially. So they made a mark on his hand to make sure he knew his left from his right. But when he turns, if he was to face the forest when he came out of the river, then his left would be his right. So, yeah, he ended up going in the right direction somehow. Another stroke of luck on his part. He ends up finding some animals drinking at a watering hole, and he's able to kill, kill a hare to have for food. However, there was also somebody else that was waiting to prey on those animals, and because God did that, all the other animals scattered. So it was a blade tiger, a magical beast, and God thought that maybe I can throw my knife at it because it's a magical knife, and, well, he didn't know it was magical really at the time, but when he pulled out his... When he went to pull it out and throw it, he realized too late that as he was throwing it, it was the mushroom before, from before. Luckily for him, though, and I say very lucky for him, because that was a not only a poisonous mushroom, that's a good thing he did not eat, but when it was destroyed with the Blade Tiger's voice cannon attack, it let out poisonous spores that got all over the Blade Tiger and severely damaged it. So this gave Gobta a actual chance to escape because before he would have been surely been killed and eaten. So he manages to run into some help after running into some humans who wanted to kill him and take his stuff. After he got so close to the Dwarven Kingdom, it was a goblina, a female hobgoblin, and um, a bunch of cobalt merchants. And he immediately falls in love with her and asks her to bear his children. She obviously turns him down and says that she wasn't doesn't want to be with someone who is too cowardly. She wants someone who someone to be with that will actually be able to rescue her for a change instead of you know the other way around. I mean, good on her. Poor Gata got heartbroken, but they were able to bring him all the way to the Dwarven Kingdom, which was good, and he was able to get away, get everything that he needed after you know bartering with the merchants in the Dwarven Kingdom, and the guy was nice enough. To not only tell him that he was actually holding a magical knife, but actually show him how to use the magical part of it in case he needed it. And he got all his stuff in a tube, a magical sealed tube, that he, that he bartered for so that way he wouldn't have to carry it in a wagon on the way back, which would have been very bad. And actually while he was heading out, he actually runs into the goblina and the others again and they offer to give him a ride at least part of the way back because they're heading in the same direction. Okay, that actually works out for him. And, um, while they're resting and he went to gather food, uh, he finds out about the poisonous mushroom thing. 
And he actually finds out about fire spores, which is another point. I think that was the mushroom. No, that was a mushroom he thought was safe, but it was actually, if it gets exposed to heat, it'll explode and have various fiery poisonous spores all over the individual. So, yeah, that's not to get not to deal with that one. But while they're resting, they end up bringing to that same blade tiger, which managed to survive, and now it's pissed off and wants revenge. Yeah, Gob to decides to get it to chase him in the forest, and um, he th turns around and ends up throwing something at it. I thought at first he threw the knife, and the tiger, realizing from its past mistakes that using voice cannon on whatever the guy threw was not a smart idea, because last time it almost ended up in getting itself killed, so it decided, decides to bite down on what he threw, which was actually the tube containing all the stuff. That he bartered for. All the pots, pans, the wagon, everything. And he unseals it, which means that it rips the jaw off a tiger. Which means now it can no longer use voice cannon. It's now even tick more ticked off than it was before. And it now can it now essentially is acting more emotionally instead of being smart. So it still chases him. And he ends up getting it caught in the underbrush. He throws the knife this time. And the tiger blocks the knife, but when he did that, it diverted it down toward a fire spore, right as he had uh, used the fire incantation on it. So now, there's a lot of explosions, and the poor tiger is now essentially damaged enough to where the other guards who had gone to help him could take it down themselves. So, yeah, this uh, gets everybody's respect, thankfully. And Gob, uh, Gobta is able to actually take everything back on the wagon with their help. And Gata might actually have a possible love interest in the future if he runs into her again. Which would actually be cool. Because Gata deserves to have something good. I mean, he has had freaking insanely good luck despite his shortcut, despite what happened, you know, in this whole thing. But yeah. Green Rune, you need to put, you need to do a appraisal skill on a Gobta and find out if he's got some kind of lucky ability or something because he's <laughs> freaking insanely good luck. Anyway, I'll get to work on everything and I will see you guys in the next one.